I'm a friend of RC's. I'm running for Ellis County Commissioner. So they're both the exact same ship, and they're going in to fight about a half a dozen British ships. Well, the British ships were a lot smaller, so, I mean, they had more firepower. They could have won this very easily. So Perry goes off. He's out there, and he's, I mean, he damages about five of the British ships, and he gets them pretty well taken down. But all of them are aiming at him by himself because the Niagara is just sitting back and waiting, not doing anything. Because he, I guess the captain of that was just afraid, afraid of exercising his right to go out there and do something. Even though he was supposed to do that. I mean, it's, they were in war. It's a time to go out there and fight for freedom. Well, Perry noticed that he can't win this battle with his ship. Four out of five of his men were killed. So four fists. I mean, 80% of his guys were either wounded or dead. And he couldn't really fire anymore because his battle deck was destroyed. So what he does is he abandons his ship, he lowers down one of the little rowboats, and he gets in there and he just starts rowing, and he's going after the Niagara. Now I'm thinking the British officers are thinking, hmm, extra beer rations forever pegs the little guy in the rowboat, or the guy in the Niagara is just probably there wetting his pants thinking, I hope they get him, I hope they get him, because I don't want him to come up here and get me. Well, Perry actually gets to make it to the Niagara, and... I guess just when you've got the blood of your fallen men and you've got your own probably on your shirt and you've got pieces of wood from your own ship that are all over you, it's pretty easy for you to commandeer and take over that ship. So Perry gets to go onto the Niagara and he comes out and then he gets to win that battle because he's got a fresh, brand spanking new ship full of ammunitions, fresh supplies, and fresh troops who are just ready to go at it, but they had some crybaby for a commander who wasn't willing to go out there. And history didn't even record the name of the guy who was captain of the Niagara because he's just that afraid to do anything. The reason why I wanted to share that 
I had asked RC before, I was like, do you want me to speak on something that's per the Second Amendment and per our rights? He said, you know, if it's on liberty and freedom, that's all we care about. I wanted to make a comparison of where we're at today to those two ships. Because us in America, we're either on the Chesapeake or, I mean, we're either on the USS Lawrence or we're on the U.S. Niagara. I mean, we all want the same thing. We want to win the battle. We want to win the war. But we have too many people that are on the Niagara just sitting back, and they don't really want to get out into the water. They don't want to risk taking a cannon shot to the chest. Even though, and nowadays, you don't have to worry about that with the fight we're fighting for in America. It's just as simple as coming out and exercising your right. It's as simple as going out and standing up and say, if you hear someone talking about something and you know that they're in the wrong, I mean, not having the character to say something wrong, yeah, that's great, but you need to have the tenacity to actually go out there and say what's right when something wrong is being said. I wanted to encourage, I mean, all of us here, we're people that are probably going to be on the Lawrence who are out there already hard charging, trying to take over and trying to win the battle and trying to restore freedom. But I want to encourage y'all to try and take a leadership role and to try and get your friends who are over on the Niagara and bring them out into the battle too because we can't win the battle for freedom with just one ship. We need the people from both of them if we're going to make it happen. And I mean, I think it's great. Like RC said, he wishes there's more people. I think we have a great turnout. I'm really excited to see as many people that are out here. But again, as many people as in Ellis County, I mean, a man named Daryl Whitesman, he drove all the way from Denton, and yet there's no one else in my neighborhood that came out here this evening or this morning. And I think that's pretty pitiful. I mean, to people who just want to sit at home, sleep in, like was said earlier, for the sacrifices that were made for the freedoms that we have in this country, Sleeping in on a Saturday is wrong. At this point in time in America, that is wrong. If you're wanting to sleep in on your day off just because it's your day off, suck it up, Cupcake. Freedom's kind of calling, and it needs somebody to come out there and fight for it. Yep. So I just wanted to come out here and try and tell you guys that we really appreciate y'all being here, supporting the Constitution, supporting freedom, and supporting your brothers and sisters and your fellow Americans in that. And next time that y'all get a chance to talk to your neighbor, even if they're a Democrat or a Republican, I mean, like what was said earlier by Commissioner Perry, who cares if it's some farmer who's 100 miles away? You have to defend his freedoms because when it comes time to defend yours, you're going to want him on your side too and not just sitting back in the corner. So that's all I have for you guys. God bless. We appreciate y'all being here.